What's up guys? Welcome to another gameplay video. Uh, first things first, this deck is not going to be very good. I think it's going to be very, very fun though. So uh, we'll, we'll go through it in just a second. One thing I want to mention really, really quickly, this is the first of the new month. Uh, I hope you guys, if you're not already looking at our Patreon account, please do take a quick peek. Uh, the, the new rewards for this month are cycling down below. I think it's a really, really good month uh, for the rewards. Uh, if you don't know, these are voted on by the patrons, so that they actually get a say in what uh, what comes out for the next month's rewards. Uh, and so they they voted on these. Uh, we had a very, very close vote this month on a couple of them. Uh, so definitely, definitely check that out if you're not already. Uh, and if you are, then thank you. We certainly appreciate it. So uh, let's jump into this deck, though. So here's the deal. Uh, the deck that we played the last couple days was the uh, Esper Super Friends list, which took itself, in my opinion, very seriously as a control deck. I don't want to do that. I want to play something really silly. So uh, I looked at a few deck lists online uh, and came up with an Outlaws Merriment deck. So uh, this was taken from Aether Hub. I did not create this, but I do think it's kind of a silly, fun deck. So I thought we'd give it a shot. So uh, let's run through it really quick. Uh, to start off, we have no one drops, but we do have Starfield Mystic as well as Birth of Miletus in the two drop slot. Uh, Birth of Miletus, obviously quite good on uh, the keeping us alive against aggro decks. Uh, it also kind of thins out our deck a little bit, which is great. Uh, Starfield Mystic is obviously a really just powerhouse card in an enchantment-focused deck, uh, which this certainly qualifies in my opinion. So uh, very, very powerful card in this deck. It also means that all of our enchantments cost a little bit less uh, to play, so that's quite good. Uh, in the three-drop slot, we have Legion Warboss, which feels like an odd include for me. Uh, but it does actually do quite a lot of stuff. I mean, it just spits out tokens, which is certainly the idea behind this deck. Uh, and so it actually fits in that realm uh, quite well, but, you know, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Uh, Archon of Sun's Grace in the 4-drop slot, obviously a very, very powerful threat with all of the enchantments in this deck as well. It's just a, it's a game changer. Uh, this really, really can turn a game around. Uh, we saw that uh, hold true in the Azorius Control deck as well as a couple others, so very, very good. Uh, obviously, I'm going to skip down to Outlaw's Merriment really quick. Obviously, this is kind of the namesake card. It's the one where we essentially create a free token every turn. Uh, it's a very, very interesting card, very random card, but I do think it will be quite fun. Uh, and so I'm, I'm excited to try it. Uh, Fires of Invention. Uh, this is a really interesting one just because it is an enchantment, so it triggers a lot of our stuff, but it also makes a lot of our stuff kind of free. Uh, and so I really like it for that reason. The one thing I will say about this deck is that we really don't have a mana sink uh, for the excessive mana that we probably won't be spending since we do have Fires of Invention out. So that's kind of a, a fairly big downfall. The one we do have, I guess, is Castle Ardenvale. So maybe that'll come into play a little bit, but I think, uh, and I guess Empress. So yeah, maybe that is enough. Um, Cavalier of Dawn, uh, really, really good. Obviously, just a powerful, powerful card. Uh, when it it gives you some recursion as well, uh, with a lot of our enchantments and things like that, which is really, really great. We also get to destroy a non-land permanent every time it comes into play, which is awesome. Uh, Divine Visitation. Uh, really interesting because obviously we're going to be just generating a lot of tokens, and if they're all four, four flying vigilance angels, that's pretty awesome. So this is very, very powerful in tandem with most of our deck. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death, also a very, very good removal spell and gives us a little bit more recursion. Uh, on, on the second counter there, we also get a little bit of a, kind of a, a bit of a slowdown on the opponent's turn, which is quite good. Um, as I said, with the mana base, we do have Castle Ardenvale as a four of, which is quite a lot. Uh, and then a one of Castle Embreath, uh, a really, really good way to seal the game. And then this obviously just great in tandem with the visitation and really just to spit out tokens is great. Uh, we do have two Fable Passage, four Temple of Triumph, and four Sacred Foundry. Uh, this in total is 26 lands, so uh, definitely an interesting list. I'm I'm kind of excited because I just think this is going to be a very silly deck. Uh, don't necessarily think it's going to be great, but I think when it works, it's going to be really, really good. Uh, so I'm excited to try it. Um, we will see how it goes. We're going to do our normal three games as we always do. Uh, and so we'll 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 give it a good test run, and then we'll probably give it a second episode as well. Um, I do know uh, we've been getting a little bit more lag uh, when playing the game more often. Uh, just a heads up there, I I believe it's solely just because the the networks are are we'll say overpopulated at the moment. 
um, due to uh, coronavirus. Everybody's on their computer. They got nothing else to do. So uh, this is not a great hand. Uh, this does help us thin out our deck, and this certainly helps us, uh, you know, hopefully get any lands off the top of our deck. We also have some removal. <sighs> Uh, I'm gonna mulligan. I don't think that's good enough. This I will keep. <sighs> we'll throw one of the Archons back. Um, this is a bit, bit of a sketchy keep as well, but one land puts us in decent shape. And then a second land, obviously, we get Archon out, so uh, assuming it's white. Um, we'll just go ahead and throw this out since we don't have anything to play here. <laughs> Um, very possible we could have kept the first hand. It just was very land heavy and didn't really do that much. Uh, Birth of Miletus did help a little bit, but um, certainly not the most exciting thing in the world. Ooh, not good. Very, very not good. Um, hopefully we can draw land. If we do draw land, I think we're, you know, in reasonable shape. We at least have the war boss. We know they're playing probably a decent amount of removal, though, uh, so... This is definitely going to be eating some spells, I believe. Uh, but we have three of them. So, hey, cheers to that. Uh, we'll see what they do. Opponent playing just a bit slow. Um, but that's okay. They are thinking. Also, turn music up a little bit. Um, wow. Good on the opponent. Got that Witch's Oven combo very early. Good. And it's a white source. That's even better. Um, let's get this out there. Opponent playing quite slowly here. go. I like that this is a two for one uh, immediately. Like if they don't deal with this, you just immediately get a second token uh, or excuse me, a second creature. That's nice. They can certainly block here. That's fine. Uh, if they sack this, they can do their thing. Get their cauldron familiar back. So next turn, uh, if we get a land, I think we just fires of invention into like either Archon or Legion War Boss, just to kind of double up on some stuff. Um, if we don't get a land, obviously we just Legion War Boss. That's all we can do. Um, Very, very annoying Mayhem Devil. We do have the Elspeth Conqueror's Death as a way to deal with that long term, but we certainly need to draw lands first, so uh, we'll see what we can do. Land is good. Land is very, very good. Okay, so <clears throat> here... Let's cast Fires... Let's go ahead and get uh, Archon out here. Not going to attack with this. They will, you know, they can easily just ping it, and that's fine. Uh, but I am going to make them ping it uh, instead of just swinging in and losing it that way. So here we're lo definitely looking for a land. We can get Elspeth Conqueror's Death and a Legion War Boss out, which would be amazing. Uh, we'll certainly do the Elspeth Conqueror's Death first to get rid of uh, Mayhem Devil. Um, and then just Legion War Boss and start swinging. Uh, that does also give us a uh, Pegasus, hopefully. Of course, now they are going to be drawing some cards off of this, which is not good for us, but um, we will see what they can do. They are kind of tapped down for the most part here. So, okay. Discard one of our war bosses here. I 
Sorry, by the way, the volume didn't work because it's uh, it's tied to... Every time I plug in the audio interface, it does this. It's kind of annoying, um, but it's just tied to that. Okay. This works quite well, actually. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's get our planes out. That way we can play the Elspeth Conqueror's Death, and we're going to double up on tokens here, which is quite good. Definitely solid uh, card draw, or a uh, solid card to draw there. Be really great to get the Divine Visitation, I suppose. Let's get that out. Let's go ahead and play this. Let's get rid of the Mayhem Devil. I assume they just ping me, that's fine. Yep. I will go ahead and attack here. Uh, not doing this now, uh, waiting till the end of their turn, by the way. Um, the reason being, if they wanted to just, uh, like, if they play out a Mayhem Devil here, for instance, we are in very bad shape uh, to just have little 1-1s one sitting around. This is not the best card against this deck, for sure. Looks like here they will not have one, though, so I am going to just go ahead and do this now. So what do we want next turn? Kind of, I mean... Divine Visitation would be amazing. Um, we can get that out plus Legion War Boss and then just starting start making 4-4 Angels, which sounds really, really good. Um, we will get a 0-4 out of this, which, you know, isn't amazing, but it does kind of block efficiently. Cavalier. Hmm. That does blow up the Witch's Oven. How many cards in their graveyard? Not many. <laughs> Definitely going to take out the Witch's Oven here. Um, that's the card we definitely don't want on the field, so... They will get their 3-3, three, three, but, you know, that's okay. We're just playing stuff out. They have, especially with Croxa, um, we certainly don't want to be in a position where we are... Uh, we're leaving cards in our hand. Especially if we've only got one card, it's definitely not worth it at that point. I don't really know. I mean, we're certainly going to be swinging in for a good bit here. And without their Mayhem Devil, we're in okay shape. But uh, specifically with Woe Strider and then these Midnight Reapers, um, we're not in great shape because they do get the opportunity to draw a good bit. Um, and we certainly don't want to be, you know, in bad shape there. They, they don't have the Witch's Oven, which is good. That just means that this combo is at least shut off. Um, Let me just double check here. Yeah, let's go ahead and swing in. We do have to swing in with this goblin, otherwise obviously we wouldn't. That's kind of interesting. I guess they just want this to die. Just so they draw some cards, that makes sense. Getting them down, but they're going to be gaining some life here. Losing some as well, but... Let 
What do we have in our graveyard to bring back? Just Legion War bosses. I'm going to end my turn here. <coughs> Excuse me. So next turn we'll gain two, and then we'll get a Legion War boss back. Eh, not amazing. I don't know why. Because they can just sack stuff to this, but nah, whatever. I guess it just saves them... Uh, Well, that's certainly not ideal. So this is obviously the problem card. And with this out, they can just kind of start sacking a bunch of stuff to, uh, to kill whatever they need to kill. Okay, I guess they didn't have it. Um, I don't think they were necessarily out of that. They had some plays, but hey, I'm fine with that. So game one goes to the Outlaw's Merriment, minus playing Outlaw's Merriment, but uh, we will go ahead and into game two. Uh, also, very quickly, allow me to... Oops. Trying to get audio going for you guys, but that's okay. There we go. Okay. This is an interesting hand. I'm going to try this. Um, Birth of Miletus hopefully will keep us alive, and then we do get Outlaw's Merriment. Uh, so I'm going to try it. We also get the Scries off of this, so. Okay. I mean, it's an untapped land. That's fine. Hmm. Hmm. No, yes. You know what? Sure. Let's try it. That might be incorrect, but we're learning. That's fine. Uh, for the record, I have not played any of this deck yet, so this is very much a first. Okay, so we don't want to take life, uh, take damage here if we can help it, so let's just go ahead and do this. Um... Next turn, we can probably temple, depending on what we draw. If we get a three drop or a two drop, we'll certainly play it. A two drop would be great, actually. Um, Birth of Miletus helping us out by creating these walls, though. I definitely think this would be a bad matchup normally, um, considering our hand. Uh, however, they definitely had a slow start here. Archon of Sun's Grace is quite good. I'm going to keep that. Uh, we have a lot of four drops. They're going to start piling up here. Um, but that's okay. We'll we'll see what we can do. Fires of Invention would have really been the optimal thing. Yep. That's certainly not amazing. I am going to block here. Just save ourselves a little bit of damage. Hmm. Gonna take a lot. This is plus two. They could very easily have Embercleave here. I think either way we're in bad shape. I'm gonna try it. Um, we're in bad shape regardless. Uh, Archon is fine because it blocks, but it literally is just gonna block. So uh, let's take a lot of damage here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, we just lose, right? And then I'm sure they have the Ember Cleave. Yeah, okay. That was a quick game. Uh, and I think that makes sense. We certainly had a slow hand. We probably should not have kept some of those on top, but yeah, that's okay. Uh, let's go ahead to game three and try this one out again. Um, I do want to have a good game where we really get to, like, see the divine intervention mixing with the outlaws of merriment and just see how that kind of plays out obviously that's that's the dream for this deck uh so if we can get that to work it'd be awesome uh, but we'll see we shall see 
Uh, yeah, this is a keep. Uh, with Bertha Miletus in particular, that's great. Against a control deck is my guess. Not going to matter too much because we're probably going to shuffle next turn. Maybe not actually. Maybe we uh, we go ahead and Starfield Mystic. We'll see if they have a counter. Oh, okay. Bounce Starfield, I assume. That's fine. So this turn we get to Starfield plus Birth. Hmm. Let's see what they got. I wonder if this is not just Azorius. Um, the Interplanar Beacon's an interesting include. I've seen it a good bit, but... Taking Starfield? Okay. Sure. Uh, yeah, definitely not just. Okay. Let's play out Archon, see what they can do. Obviously, that's a pretty must-answer kind of card here. Um, and they very well may just have, like, a Shatter the Sky or something like that. But next turn, we do get to Elspeth Conquer's death. So it's, like, meh, not the worst thing in the world. Okay, I think first things first here. We'll go to combat and swing at Teferi. Okay, definitely expected that. Get that out of there. Divine Visitation also is an interesting one, but I don't think here it's the best option. And with three Elspeth Conquer's deaths, we've got some options here. One for one answer everything and see what they can do. Um, certainly we're going to take a hit here. And that's okay. Let's see what they pull. Sarkon. Yep. Makes sense. Really wish we had one other land, but I'm gonna save this for the Sarkon, I believe. I guess we could have done that. Eh, that's okay. Shatter. Yep. Fully expect them to just shatter here, but again, that's fine. We have Elspeth Conquer's death. Again, don't care that much. Now they do get to shatter again here, but uh, that's fine. We get a 4-4 angel, so we're going to draw some stuff off of this shatter, which is sweet. It's definitely working, you know, close to the way we'd like it to. Do we care? No, actually, we do have to get rid of Narset here. 
I suppose they could have a shock. So we're, we we already saw a combat trick, so let's make sure that we're going to kill Narset by attacking with two here. Uh, that's certainly the safer play. Okay, yep. So that would have been definitely a big, big problem had we not... Um, attacked with both of those, they could have just Bone Crusher Giant one of the whatever we attacked uh, Ben Arset with, and then when they do shatter, which is very expected to happen here, um, then we obviously would have lost quite a bit uh, because we would not have been able to draw specifically. We also uh, things to think about. We do have Castle Ardenvale out, so we can just start like you know pumping out tokens right and left if we'd like. I assume bounce token, so we don't draw a card off of it, or potentially one of these. Okay. Sure. I'm okay with that. This is very similar. I mean, this is a an updated list of the uh, the Jeskai Planeswalker slash I, Jeskai Super Friends deck that essentially just wins with Sarkon swinging in and all your Planeswalkers, which is cool. I'm gonna leave back the Legion more boss, I believe. Uh, as good as it is, I don't think it's what we want to do here. So again, we're gonna swing two at Teferi. One there. Oop. Come on now. Why does that not want to? There we go, okay. So we'll swing like this. Again, if they want to answer something, they can, but we still definitely get to kill Teferi and get him for some damage. And we're gaining tons and tons of life. Again, leaving this back, uh, they will be shattering here for sure. And we do have ways to, to just rebuild on board, but uh, this certainly helps us out quite a bit. So I'd rather have uh, as much as we can to, to do that with. We do get to draw a card, which is good. Yep. Hmm. Yeah, we'll go ahead and play Birth of Miletus here. I'm not playing out the fires, I don't think. But I will play Legion more boss. Hmm. You know what? Sure. I'll, I'll play out fires. I don't think it's going to matter too much here. It's almost more limiting at this point, but we'll we'll see. It does leave us mana open so we can do the Castle Ardenvale trick, <clears throat> which I do think is worth it, obviously. That's fine. Couldn't care less about that, to be honest. Wow. So we're going to take out Sarkon with one of these. Cool. Wow, that was a really fun game. Okay, so we did get to see it kind of work, and I'm hoping we, we will get to in the second video, which will uh, hopefully be up tomorrow. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. This is a very, very fun list. So uh, please do uh, watch this whole video, check it out. I'll have an article review of this deck as well, which I've already posted one on the Esper Super Friends list. So if you're interested in kind of taking a little bit more of a peek behind the scenes and uh, see kind of my overall thoughts on the deck, that kind of thing. That's certainly a good place to do it. That is on our website at itresolvesmtg.com. Certainly would appreciate you uh, checking that out. So again, uh, April 1st is here. Uh, so new Patreon rewards are available. So please do check that out as well. And it's, of course, our Instagram is down there too. So uh, thank you guys so much. We really do appreciate you watching these videos. Please stay home. Please stay safe. And uh, hopefully I will see you guys again tomorrow with this awesome, awesome Outlaws Merriment deck. So thanks again for watching, guys. I'll see you later.